It might have been a gangster's paradise with Coolio in 2015, but round one, 2024, is going to be a tipster's paradise. And it's Pepsi with tipped outs, round one selections for a massive week of AFL football. And it's all kicking off tonight at the MCG, 7.30pm, the Carlton Blues versus the Richmond Tigers, and it is going to be a blockbuster for the ages. Carlton had a sensational win against Brisbane last week, coming from a massive 40-plus points behind to scrape victory against a rampaging Lions, who looked like they were going to set the world on fire in the first half and then completely went into hibernation in the second part. But also Richmond, they were atrocious, let's be honest, against Gold Coast Suns last week. Uze has swung the axe quite a fair bit, and that means that Martin's going to be coming in, Lynch is going to be coming in, Nan Curvis is all going to be coming in. But in my humble opinion, even with the loss of Doherty, Carlton are going to be way too strong. And I was there last year when Carlton played finals against the Ds, and the G will be a rockin'. Now... Keep in mind, this is the first time these two teams have played since last year's round one game. And if you remember, that was a memorable draw. I don't think that's going to happen tonight. I think it's going to be an absolute blowout to Carlton. This could be a 39-plus pointer. And it'd be a massive one for your multis, because I think they are going to put their nose to the grindstone and squish Richmond into oblivion and really put their stamp on the competition in 2024. All right, after that, we are getting into the Friday night special, ladies and gentlemen. And you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Collingwood. I'm talking about the Sydney Swans. I'm talking about two teams who went completely the opposite that people thought last weekend. The Swans had a cracking win against the Ds last week. Blew them away in that last quarter. But the Collingwood Magpies were destroyed by a hungrier GWS Giants uh, away at home. Now, we knew the Giants would be pretty good if the way that they finished last year. But they were sensational against the Pies. And the Pies, look, they might have needed to get a couple of the AFL Panadol for their premiership hangover. And if they go 0-2 and two early into 2024, a couple of the jungle drums will be blasting. But we know this game is kicking off tomorrow night, 7.40pm at the home of football MCG. Teams have not been released at this particular stage. And I'm simply going to go with Collingwood for two main reasons. They're going to be unfurling the flag. And the second thing is, is that it is on a bigger ground. And we know that the Swans play really well on the tight constraints of the SCG. But I can see them coming over to the MCG. It's a little bit wider. And that compressive defense that they have at that smaller ground isn't going to be able to be done at the MCG. And I think Collingwood, on their night of nights, are going to come out with the W. Could it be a tight one? Yes, I'm going a three-goal game to uh, Collingwood, and I can actually see my mate, Jordan DeGoey, having a B-O-G. The last time these two teams met, it was Collingwood getting the chocolates by 29 points, which was round eight in 2023. All right, the traditional rivals, we love these two teams. It's going to be happening on Saturday. Essendon versus Hawthorne, some of the greatest finals that we would have seen through the 80s. It was the line in the sand game. And more importantly for these two teams on the rise, trying to either solidify a spot in the final eight, which Essendon had for a majority of the year in 2023, but fell away in the back end. Or Hawthorne, who are doing a really nice rebuild under Sam Mitchell, who I've been very critical for a long, long time. I love what they're doing. So it's going to be, who do we trust more in this particular game? I just think with the bigger bodies, and a little bit more experience, and bringing in Ben Mackay, Dersma will be hopefully playing as well too, and you're also going to have Goldstein in the ruck. If you've got midfield action that Essendon had last year, I don't mind them down back, and they've got a few a few forwards that I'm pretty, um, pretty bullish by as well too. I think that they're just going to get over the line against Hawthorne. You've got to understand, Hawthorne had a pretty dismal game against um, the Doggies in their practice match series. I think they kicked like 16 goals in a row against them, and, and it wasn't pretty to watch. So just based on what I've seen so far, who do I trust more? I'm going to go with Essendon. I reckon it's going to be a cracking game for Essendon and Hawthorne supporters to watch because it is two teams. It's like the middle of the pack in the Formula 1 that, you know, they're Essendon trying to get that final spot. You don't know what's going to happen with Hawthorne. I'm going to actually go with Essendon, and I'm going to go by three goals as well too. It's going to be a tighter one, but I can see them probably kicking away in the back end of that game as well too. And you've got to remember last year, Essendon won this exact game, round one last year, by close to 59 points. So 
Mm. Can they do it two years in a row? For Eastern supporters, they definitely hope so. All right, moving in to 4.35 p.m. in the twilight spot, not the twilight zone. The Giants of GWS are up against North Melbourne. Let's call it how it's going to be. This is going to be an absolute mauling. The Giants are going to stomp on North, even though they're going to have McCurcher uh, and also Dersma playing for them as well. They are still in that regrowth mode. They haven't got a back line. And when you've got Brown, Hogan, um, uh, Cadman, Green at the forwards, and also throw in Daniels as well too, this could be turning into a bit of a massacre. This is going to be at least a 10-goaler. And I can see one of the forwards at the Giants having an absolute blowout. I'm really looking forward to seeing what... Uh, Larky can do this year. I've actually tipped him for the Coleman. He's going to get a lot more supply. He's going to have a better midfield delivering the footy. Unfortunately, when the ball goes down to the back line, this is not the way that you want to start the season. It's going to be very, very difficult to stop that massive forward line for the Giants. And they'll take this one out by easily 10 to 12 goals. Let's move on to 7.30 p.m. at GMHBA Stadium. Finally, the stand is going to be released. They're going to have 40,000 ferals down there in Geelong against the St. Kilda Saints. I think this is going to be a little bit tighter than people think. I'm looking at the, the, the preseason form of both of these teams, and I actually thought St. Kilda were pretty good. Henry is going to be a massive addition for that team. The speed that he and Hill will get off the rebounding halfbacks is going to be awesome, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how Max King will have a massive season as well. Even though it is down at Geelong, I'm tipping a bit of an upset here. It's my only upset that I'm picking for this particular weekend of football. The Saints are going to win this by under a goal. And it's just going to be because I think from what I saw, they're going to run the ball a bit better. They're going to be more efficient with it. And I just trust them a little bit more. Even with your danger field, even with Hawkins, even with Cameron down there. I know we've got Stewart and so forth down back. I'm a little bit concerned about their midfield. And I just think the Saints will have a little bit more depth in that particular area. But I really like what they've got up forward. Max King memory. Can't ask for much more of that, but this will be less than a goal and an absolute nail biter between these two teams. The last two times, times these two teams played, it was a 33-point win to uh, St. Kilda. And funny enough, that was round 23, 2023. So we don't have to go too far back to remember what happened there. And the last game for Saturday will be the Gold Coast Suns versus the Adelaide Crows. Gold Coast was supreme, although it was against a diminished Richmond team last weekend. But Adelaide, they've got probably one of the best midfields, sorry, one of the best forward lines running around. But here's the thing. I think Gold Coast in Gold Coast is going to be a challenge for most teams this year. Raul was sensational. Anderson, Miller, you've got King down there as well too. Uh, Lacocious, awesome. The back line is picking up um, steam with every week they've got. And I just think having that dimmer style of football where it's fast, knock on, and I really think that they'll be able to take this game out. Adelaide will be very, very exciting. Don't get me wrong, but away from home, I don't trust them whatsoever. We saw their record last year. I think it was uh, lost 9-1-2 on the road last year uh, for the Adelaide Crows. And until I see something different, I'm just going to go against whenever they're playing uh, away from home. And Philthorpe being out for a number of um, weeks is going to be a massive loss for them as well. Tex is going to unfortunately have to carry the brunt uh, of the forward line unless Fogarty stands up. You've also got Rankin and Rochelle down there. So they've got some versatility. I just can't see it being against round one who've got that, that week into them. Gold Coast probably be tight a little bit early, but that will go by four to five goals, I think, on this one and cause a bit of an upset. A very, very big game is happening on Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock p.m. It's my boys of the Melbourne Football Club versus the Bulldogs of the Western Suburbs, otherwise known as Footscray. These two teams have got a bit of a rivalry. It's been building up over the years. We know what happened in the 2021 Grand Final. And ever since then, their round one clashes have been one to look out for. And this is going to be an absolute belter. The Ds won this one last time by a good 50 points. They were really exciting. They were really average, oh, let's be honest, against Sydney last week. They started pretty well. Contested ball, beasts. But the usual stories of not being able to get the ball into their forward line fast enough for them to be able to create some space for their forwards occurred. Uh, and it also doesn't help when Sydney were flooding 18 uh, potential players into their back 50 every single time it went down there. It was a nightmare. It was humid. I get all that. But back on their home deck, they are going to be a little bit frightening, especially if Petty comes up. When you have Petty, Van Royen running that forward line with Cozzy Pickett back in and maybe a Tom Fullerton as well, they are going to be some players that are going to support Gorney, support that forward mix, and also give Petrarca a bit of an option to float down forward as well too. 
On the other side, you've got Hugo Hagen, the biggest uh, free agent for 2024. He is going to be um, important with Norton down there as well too. Don't forget the Bont. Don't forget Libba. They do everything right. But I just think Melbourne have got so much to lose if they lose this game. They have to win this one to keep their top eight aspirations. If they go 0-2, and two, the jungle drums will start beating, not just for the team, but for the coaching side of things. They have been primed. They've got that extra week of run into them as well too. And I'm looking for them to take this one out by probably four to five goals. It will be a late charge, but I reckon that they're going to be able to do it. Another one that we're going to have to look forward to is on Sunday afternoon is Port Adelaide versus the West Coast Eagles. Port Adelaide, they went straight sets like the Ds last year. West Coast, Harley Reid making his debut. Um, it's probably been the, the biggest thing to come out of Perth since Jet. Um, but I think at home, Port Adelaide... They're set for a finals run this year. I haven't actually picked them to make the eight this year, uh, but they have recruited semi-well. West Coast, they've still got a lot of trimming to do. They're still going to finish last this year. This one's going to be maybe close for a, a quarter or so, then it's going to be a blowout. I reckon this is going to be another 10-goaler. Uh, if Charlie Dixon has a day out, he could absolutely turn it on. But I'm really thinking that if you look at these two teams, I just trust Port Adelaide more. Even though it's a first game for both, they will take it out. Take it out quite easily. And that means that the co-host with the most, Jamie the Joey Dog Wallace, is going to be massively excited. When I look at this, if you have a look at last year, it was a 40-point win to Port Adelaide. Uh, and that was round six in 2023. But I reckon, yeah, 10 goals at minimum. And the last game for the weekend is going to be an interesting one. It's the Fremantle Dockers versus... The Brisbane Lions, that's all going to be kicking off tomorrow at 6, oh sorry, 6.50 p.m. on Sunday evening, Melbourne time. So that's probably going to be what, 4.50 p.m. in WA? Fremantle, I don't know what. They are the box of chocolates. We just do not know what we're going to get. Brisbane, after last week, after being 46 points up and throwing it away, they will be chomping at the bit to take out a massive win against the Fremantle Dockers. They're going to have that extra week into them. They will run this game out, and I can actually see this one turning into a bit of a massacre as well too. I think this could be an 8-10 to 10 goal win easily if Brisbane decide to play the football that they did in the first half last week against the second half. Even though they've got Jackson, even though they've got Darcy, even though they've got... Um, Tabana, even though they've got Jai Miss, even though they've got um, good old Nat Fife, I still don't think Fremantle are the team that they once were. I don't actually rate them at all this year. I could even see them being a bottom four team. That is how bad I think that they are. Uh, Long, Longmuir is going to have some questions. I think the first coach sack is either going to be Longmuir or it is going to be Goodwin this year, unless, if Melbourne do not turn things around. But I think Brisbane are primed. After their disappointment from last week, they will definitely want to take this one out. Eight to ten goals easily. Rightio, there you are. There is our tipped out tips for round one. Not zero, but one of the AFL season. If I'm right, let me know in the comments below. If I'm wrong, tell me how wrong I am. But more importantly, thanks for listening. We'll be back on Monday night. Me and J-Dog live on Lace Out. We'll bring tips to you every single week. It's tipped out.